how to claim your business on Google. Now, as a plumbing company owner, people search Google all the time, wanting to find a plumber in their area, different things like that. And having a Google My Business set up helps me get found better than a lot of people because a lot of people don't do it right. Today, I'm gonna give you my top 10 things about how to get your business found on Google and make your phone ring, really, just by having Google My Business set up properly. Thank you for being here. This video is sponsored by Ferguson.com. Now we teamed up with Ferguson because of everything they do for plumbers, the plumbing community, and the communities that they're in. So having your Google My Business set up properly can make a difference in your phone ringing and not ringing. Now it's literally that easy. So there's 10 steps that I'm gonna give you that will help you go through if you haven't done it yet. This is something you need to do right now. Matter of fact, you needed to do this yesterday, but since you're just now watching this video, start now. So the first thing is number one, if you're wanting to open a business or you're thinking about it or any of the things like that, go ahead and start doing research, find out the name of your company and get it registered with the Secretary of State, get your LLC filed, get everything done that you need to do to have your name, to have your business entity clear to find. And if you'll stay around to the end, I'm gonna tell you a special tip and trick to do that'll help make sure that you get found even better later by using social media. So to get your name registered, contact your secretary of state. You may have to go down and fill out some paperwork, do a DBA, do a LLC, something like that, but get that done. That's the first step. And getting the name that you want is a very big deal. Now next, you're gonna create a Google My Business account. So before you claim your business, you've actually got to set up a Google My Business account and it's not very hard. It's like setting up a Google email address, but you've got to get in and get your account set up. That way you can start building off of that. Now, number three, this is where you're gonna enter the name of your business. Now, it's not real hard, just look back at rule number one. What name did you use there? This is a thing too, check your area even before you do one. What business name do you want? And is that business name available? Has anybody used it? Does that name have a bad reputation? I go back to Google here and actually do a Google search. Check and find out if that name's been used, damaged, destroyed, if there's already a website out there that you maybe can't get, because these are things that you need to know now. You wouldn't wanna name your company after another company in your area. Number one, they're gonna probably shut you down. So start doing your research even before number one, determine your name. Now, part of my tip to number 11, also see is that name available on the social platforms? And we'll talk more about that when we get down to the bonus. Now, number four, and this is an important one, enter the address of the business. Now, think about this because I want you to think about this per your website, per anything you're doing on social media, per any advertising you're doing, you wanna always have your website the same. So my address, has a road and a suite number. In all of our marketing and all of our advertising, in all of our Google presence, we have road as RD. Now, if it's ever entered road, some of these spiders crawling may look at it as something different. Also on the suite number, if you're gonna put suite in front of it, keep it there all the time. If you're gonna put a hashtag, you know, the pound sign, if you're gonna put that there like number 101, you wanna make sure that you do it in every single place. The reason being, little things different like that starts telling Google or other platforms, hey, this may not be the same place, and they may bump you down a little bit and put somebody else up ahead of you. Well, when that happens, guess who the consumer calls? You wanna be very careful about this. Your name, your address, you wanna make sure is the same all across any and every platform your own. That way there is no confusion by anybody. Next is set up Google Maps. Now, this is one of the most important things on there. Now, it goes back to your address. That's why you wanna be very specific about that. But setting up the maps is huge. One thing too about setting up Google Maps, they're gonna ask you a lot of questions. You know, do customers come to you? Do you go out in this area? What all do you do and how do you do it? Now, this is a thing too they're gonna ask, you know, do you have a hidden store? Meaning, do you allow customers to come to your place? Think about it. Most residential service companies probably don't want the consumers coming to their office and coming in, knocking on the door and say, hey, how are y'all doing? 
Now, don't get me wrong, I've worked in some that did because they had displays set up and they could actually show their consumers what they were doing. But Google Maps is gonna help you because it lets people see what area you're in. And if you're very close to them, they may say, hey, I wanna call them just because they're right down the road. And doing different things like that, having everything set up properly can make a big difference to whether they can find you quicker or whether you're the ones that they choose. Now, number six, search and choose a business category. For most people, this is pretty basic information, but I want you to think about this and I want you to be very specific here. Meaning, as a plumbing company, an HVAC company, a roofing company, something like that, we don't wanna just put trades, construction, residential service, anything like that. We wanna be specific. We wanna let Google know we are a plumbing company. That way, when people are looking for plumbing, Google knows who to put them in front of. This is something that if you get more specific and get down to really what you wanna be found for, this can actually make a big difference because a lot of people just get in a hurry and do this. They're like, look, we're just a service company. We're, we're just a construction company. We're just this. Well, that's a big, broad word. And a lot of people can get found and maybe you get lost in the clutter there. Make sure you're very specific about what you do. Now, plumbing companies in the Dallas area, there's still a lot of them. But at least I know that Google knows exactly what I do because if Google knows, they know who to put me in front of when people are looking for that. That's really a big deal. Now, number seven, enter the contact information and website. Now, you want people to come to your Google My Business because that's what Google does to help people find you. And if they come to it, you want them to be able to get to your website if they need more information. And another big thing is, this is where people can come to leave Google reviews. Now we all want reviews. We all want five-star reviews. So we wanna make sure that we're putting all our information in there correctly. If you have a phone number and you only use one number, you wanna make sure that number is all across the board perfect. And what I mean by that is if you've got it on other platforms, if you've got it on a website, if you've got it on a Facebook page, if you've got it everywhere, you wanna make sure that that number is there. You don't want just a random number that you've got off call rail just to track to see what it's doing because this is Google. You wanna make sure the information that you have on your website, on Google, everywhere is the same. And this is gonna be something that is gonna be important because again, like I said earlier about the address, about things like that, if Google finds it different, they're gonna be like, you know, something's not right here. And they're gonna kinda of bury you on page 10. Now, number eight, and this is important, choose your verification process. I love this because Google actually wants to make sure you're really setting up your business. Not me, not somebody else, not some fly by night guy. So they wanna know, do you want us to call you? Do you want us to get your phone number? Do you want us to send you an email? Actually, one thing they used to do, and I'm not even sure if they're doing it anymore, they used to send a postcard. Google would not put you in unless they sent you a postcard and knew you were at that address. So verification is a big deal, and I love the fact that Google actually verifies it. Why is that? This way we don't have handyman or somebody out there advertising, hey, I do plumbing, I do electrical, I do HVAC. You know, the things you need a license for. Now, number nine, and this is another big one that a lot of people skip. They think once they get their site set up, once they get their Google My Business done, it's over. Not necessarily. Once you get verified, now you can come in and optimize your GMB listing. So when you come in to optimize, that's where you can put your hours, that's where you can put your employees, that's where you can put photos about services or products that you have. There's so many things that you can do in the optimization stage that a lot of people really don't do. Again, this can set you apart. Now this is also where you wanna check your address, your phone number, your business name, spelling, anything like that. Is everything perfect and the same as it is on your website, your Google My Business, wherever it is that's out there, Google can find that information. And if they start finding that things are different, it's gonna lower your ranking. And this is all about helping build your domain authority and getting people to find you when you wanna be found. Number 10, post and reply often. Now, when people come in and give you feedback, remember this is Google My Business, you want reviews. When people come in and review, good or bad, you need to reply. If people leave you good reviews, you definitely wanna tell them thank you so much. And if they give you bad reviews, this is where you can follow up. Now, this is not where you wanna fight. You don't wanna argue with people, but you wanna tell your side of the story. Meaning, I'm sorry that you aren't happy. Would you please call me so we can discuss this more? I'd like to take care of you. See what you can do to resolve the situation. Nobody wants bad reviews out there. 
And when people see that you do get bad reviews, that's not necessarily going to keep them from calling you. Actually, if you reply properly and polite and friendly and they say, hey, you know what? We know you can't make everybody happy, but look at the way he responded. Look how he took care of the customer later. Sometimes that can make all the difference in the world. That's why number 10 is so big. Feed the algorithm. Let them see that people are coming and commenting with you and you're commenting back. You're engaging with your community. Now, another big one here is make sure you post often. What do you do when you go out and do jobs? Do you post pictures? Hey, it was wonderful to take care of so-and-so, so-and-so today. Another thing too, and this is just a little secret tip and trick, put in what you do and what cities you're in. Meaning we did a slab leak repair in Richardson, Texas today. These words are searchable and when they see Slab Leak Repair Richardson, it can actually drive people to see these reviews or posts to help you out. Now, I hope you enjoyed this. And remember, I've got another one for you. This video is sponsored by Ferguson and we teamed up with them because we really enjoy working with people that are great to work with and they have people that take care of us. And us, that's what it's all about. Now for the big finale. This is exactly what I've been waiting for. Here's the deal. Remember I told you in the beginning when you're setting up your name, you want to check on every platform that's out there and see if you can get that same name. Now, why is this important? You may say, Roger, I'm never going to do TikTok or Snapchat or something like that. You know what? When I started, I wasn't either. But now guess what? After YouTube, we're now doing TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, Reddit. We are everywhere. And luckily we've got our names in most of those places. This is one that can be really big for you to do. And another one too, make sure every week, at least once a week, you go into your Google My Business, you put new pictures in, you put new posts in, you put new comments in. This kind of keeps the algorithm going. It lets them know that you are trying to engage with your viewers. And Google wants to give them great information. So by you doing stuff like this, it's gonna move you up to the top. I want to say thank you again to the people at Ferguson for everything they've done for us and everything they allow us to do for you. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.